Hello and welcome to Car Dealer Live. My name is James Batchelor. You've had the pleasure of James Baggett and his dulcet tones up to now. I'm sitting in the hot seat today, but James will be back very shortly. Now, today on the show, I'll be chatting with Dan Kirby from Trade Price Cars, an independently owned business based in Essex. And Dan is the owner, founder, and also the managing director. Good afternoon, Dan. Afternoon, James. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. Now, firstly, for a bit of background, Dan set up the business nine years ago, and since then, it has become a leading business in the Essex region. He's also managing director of Octane Finance, an automotive finance provider. Now, Trade Price Cars is a multi-award winning business too. Last year, Trade Price Cars impressed our judges so much, it scooped the highly fought over category of best to use car dealer over 100 cars. Last year, it turned over £22 million, but like most businesses, Trade Price Cars is looking at the future with a little trepidation. Also, if the name Trade Price Cars is a little familiar, then you might have seen them on the racing track. Not only does Dan own the company, but he's also a racing team owner. Trade Price Cars have been competing in the prestigious and much-loved British Touring Car Championship since 2019. Last year, they had a team of Audi S3 saloons with none other than former Formula One driver and Le Mans winner, Mark Blundell at the wheel. Now we're gonna be talking about that and much more in the next 20 minutes or so. If you're watching on YouTube and have any questions, please feel free to submit them there and I'll put them to Dan, but we'll start with mine. Okay, Dan, uh, let's kick off then. So. Obvious question, really. Uh, showrooms have been open for a week now. How has trade been for you? Yeah, thanks, James. And uh, yeah, thanks again for asking me on. Um, yeah, do you know what? We've been, would I use the word surprised? I'm encouraged by what's going on. I mean, I've got to be honest, uh, you know, pound for pound, head for head, based on the amount of people that we got back in, in, in the business at the minute, which is probably about 80% of uh, the staff levels. Uh, it's been really busy, you know, we've been, we sold, we had a good week last week and, you know, we weren't far off of what we were um, pre-lockdown, if I'm honest with you. So, you know, the, the early signs are encouraging. Um, we were dealing with uh, inquiries remotely, you know, from home and stuff like that, you know, during lockdown. Um, and I sort of personally felt, you know, and, and, and you know, it was reported, you know, on, on your side of stuff as well with Car Dealer Magazine that, you know, the, the sentiment was that, you know, things are, you know, it's going to be a lot of pent up demand, you know, buyers are going to be ready to buy, um, you know, uh, and inquiry levels are high, you know, you look at the auto trader data and all the rest of it. Um, and absolutely, you know, that absolutely has been the case, you know, we've hit the ground running. Um, it's been excellent. We, we, we've managed to have, you know, like I say a good week and it's, you know, essentially our first official week. And, and kept walking into the inquiries this morning is, is, is much the same. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say there's probably a little bit of relief there, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it has been that way. I think it's been a bit of a worrying time for, for, for the industry and obviously the nation and the world. Obviously, it goes without saying. But, you know, to come, you know, at the early stages of uh, this, you know, this pandemic and, you know, things lifting slightly, uh, certainly in our country, yeah, it's encouraging. So how was lockdown for you? I mean, were you still able to sort of operate a, a fairly normal business? Um, we, no, I mean, we did, but we certainly weren't operating, you know, a normal business. We we actually made the decision, I think we were one of the first callers to actually say, look, no, we're going to close. So we actually, um, we made that decision um, a good five or six hours before the government come out with, you know, the protocol. Um, I think it's the right one. You know, that was a decision that I didn't take lightly. Obviously, it goes without saying. Um, you know, it was a real, real strange one, you know, but I felt it was a, the right one for the business, but actually as a duty to, to the nation and, and, and to, to the people's health, you know, our own, our families and the employees, you know, it was the right one. So we'd already made that decision regardless. So uh, obviously, it goes without saying, you know, keeping a close eye on what was going on in the news, it was you know, sort of suggested that that was going to be the case at five o'clock, six o'clock at night, whatever happened. But we called it about 10 o'clock that day. 
Um, we informed staff, we had a, a meeting uh, with everyone, you know, from valetors, technicians, uh, sounds people, everyone in one room, um, and, and, and told them what's going on and the decision behind it and all the rest of it. And, you know, it's a, you know, it's the toughest decision that I've had to make, um, you know, as, as a business owner, but it definitely proved to be the right one. Um, and then from that, you know, we, the lockdown for us, you know, to answer your question, was, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. I suppose we didn't do a lot, have a lot of activity in the first week or so. Um, if I'm honest, I was uh, just keeping an eye on inquiries, you know, from home. So essentially, we did make everyone furlough. So everyone, you know, within the business, other than uh, myself, essentially was made furlough. Um, and then, you know, I was actually dealing with a lot of the in inbound inquiries. And I think I could see sort of, you know, certainly after a week or so, the first week, not too much going on. Um, you know, I, I spent a few days at home doing what I needed to do, but I've got to be honest with you, it was driving me insane, you know, slowly, well, actually quickly, to be honest with you. So within three or four days, my wife had had enough of me, um, you know, so she was quite happy for me to, 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 to go off to work. And actually, I was unofficially going into the office, you know, just to make sure stuff was okay, as in, like, you know, the premises, the cars and everything like that. Um, and I and I, I had a lot of stuff to catch up on with, if I'm honest with you, you know, as as we have to, you know, did the same pre pre uh, going live, you know, it's given us all an opportunity to reconcile stuff that we haven't been able to do over over the years and all the rest of it. So I did have a lot to do, but yeah, over a period of days and weeks, actually, I could still see that there's inquiries coming in. You know, I was still communicating with those customers. Um, and really just registering their inquiries and trying to keep them warm and everything like that. Um, so yeah, to summarise your question, definitely lockdown wasn't like business as usual, um, but we did do a few bits, you know, done some stuff, delivery, you know, when the delivery sort of stuff started easing and, you know, it was suggested that they might be able to be done, you know, there's contradicting um, opinions on that, you know, you know, and I know some dealers and, you know, rightly so, they've completely closed the doors and not done anything. Now, if I'll be honest with you and say that we have done a few bits, um, some, certainly some delivery stuff. And again, you know, you, there'd be mixed mixed um, sentiment on whether that was the right or the wrong thing to do. But, you know, for us, we wanted to, you know, ensure that we could still do a little bit. You know, we needed to, you know, ultimately still pay bills and, you know, pay the staff and all the rest of it, which we've managed to do for the last couple of months. We've not actually had any furlough money in yet. Um, from so we're, we're two months into actually uh, this and not received a penny from the government, um, but we've met, been managed to support you know 45 employees um, and their families and ensure that you know there hasn't been a knock on financial effect for them. So you know it's it, we've done as best as we can, you know, and um, you know, so yeah, it's not been not been normal, but like I say, there's been lots of positives. Lots of positives, you know, whilst the, um, you know, the, the health implications to the nation, which obviously is just desperately sad, um, you know, there's, there's certainly been positives. It's been, it's been, it's allowed me personally to look at the business and our businesses uh, closer. Um, and, you know, we've, we've been able to strip out certain things. We've been able to look at, you know, our costings and, and sort of make decisions as to whether, we need to be carrying on with some of those activities. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I think it's probably brought us all down a bit of a, a level as well. You know, I think, you know, we, we can be a bit more appreciative of work, you know, our working lives and, you know, the, the time that we do have with our families is precious. You know, I've, I've, I've had employees come and sort of say to me, you know, I've really enjoyed the time, you know, that I had off and, you know, all the rest of it, you know, so, which is, which is good, but actually, on the same token, they're very grateful to be back at work, do you, know, you, know, you know, and genuinely, I mean, I would say, you know, 90, 80, 90% of the people that come back have genuinely been happy to come back, which I know that hasn't necessarily been the case all over, you know, I do read stuff and, you know, some companies struggling to get people to come back off furlough, but, you know, I, I like to think, you know, we've created a good working environment, we've got a good great staff you know not just good staff we've got some great staff and actually they was keen to get back and, and get back to it 
I mean, it's a, it's a real credit to yourself and being able to sort of be a bit of a one man band and, and try and run the company by yourself for a period of time and yet still being able to pay people without the government grants coming through. Um, has it, has it uh, been a bit of a step back in time for you, really, when you first started out the business? I mean, let, let's talk about that, actually. So uh, what made you start the business to start off with? Yeah, it's funny you should say that. Yeah, the, the couple of weeks was very much like going back to it was when it was just me. So, um, you know, a bit of a brief history of my background. Um, I started as a, an apprentice for Inchcape. Um, a BMW uh, was Bates, well, it's Cooper BMW over in Malden at the time in Essex. That's now gone. They rebuilt um, Cooper BMW in Chelmsford. I was a service advisor there for um, from 16 to about 19. Um, I then always had a desire to get into sales, um, you know, which uh, the mini brand came out in around 2001. So I probably would have been on 34 now. So whatever that would have made me. At the time, I started doing Saturdays in Mini, um, helping them. At the time, in BMW, you couldn't be a BMW sales executive. I don't know if it's the same now, but you couldn't be in BMW unless you was 25, which I understand why. I don't know whether that's the same now. Um, but, yeah, I started doing the Mini thing, and then um, I sort of forced my way into the sales department, for want of a better word. I just had the desire to do it. Uh, my DP at the time and you know the sales manager said could see I had a lot of desire to do it I didn't want to be a service advisor anymore um, I, I, I sort of said look in the nicest possible way um, if you don't want me in sales that's fine I'm going to leave and I'm going to go to Ford because that was a route in you could be at that sort of age and anyway to cut a long story short they made the they made the decision that they was going to allow me I worked my way through um, you know used, used car BMW and I actually left there after a couple of years um, at the time, my DP said, you're mad. I'm a sales manager, what are you doing? You're never going to do a BMW. You've got a Z4, the Z, you know, as a demo, blah, 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 blah. And then I left and I went to an independent dealer. Um, I, I, I followed um, a salesperson who left there to go and run this independent dealer. And then I, and I've done five years in the independent world. And actually, it's very different. Whilst the... Uh, you know, manufactured base side and the main dealer work was great and I would not change that for the world because the training within BMW and the ground and it gets you second to none. I'd always encourage anyone to do that, you know. Um, but the independent world, uh, I think it, it excited me more, you know. It was it was sort of, I was everything when, everything from, you know, buyer to seller to taking the pictures to running around, dealing with painters, mechanics and everything like that. So it was actually quite a, a good grounding if you like just doing that job to then actually progress into doing your own thing um and yeah long and short of it i um i, I worked for this independent for five six years um essentially was you know there was only three of us so it wasn't a big a big pace so i was very hands-on and then i gradually i was i, I was you know, buying and selling some cars myself um, from home, leaving my mum at the time, a couple of two grand Fiesta Z Tech S's when those on like a wire reg 51 plate, you know, buying them for two grand, selling them for two and a half. So I was doing that from home and I and I only used to advertise one car. So I used to have one car on Auto Trader for two grand, but I'd get five or six inquiries off of that uh, in quite, in, uh, that one advert. You know, so no massive auto trade bills then. It's like 15 quid to advertise one car for two weeks. But I'd sell four or five cars off the back of it because I'd buy other cars off of eBay or trade and stuff like that. You know, tidying them up, MOTing them and then putting them up for sale. Uh, so I was doing that alongside what I was doing and then I was built, built some more money up and then I started putting other cars on um, the dealer's full court that I was working. And we had an agreement whereby, you know, I'd profit off of the stock that I own. So... To cut a long story short, I, I've, I've built up a, a reasonable sum of money um, over that four or five year period. Um, you know, I didn't, I reinvested it, you know, back into stock, um, you know, um, and the site I'm on now come up. Um, and I remember I, I drove past it one day um, and I was really hung over. I remember it really well. I was really hung over from the night before. And it was a decision that, I probably wouldn't have made, I'm going to say this, maybe I shouldn't have been driving at the time. I don't drink anymore, so I don't drink. Um, 
Yeah, maybe the decision, I shouldn't have been driving, but it's a decision I think I made to make that jump there and then and walk onto the full court and say to the the uh, the landlord, say, but I'll have it because I don't think if I'd been under the influence maybe or, you know, from the, the, the night before, whether I'd made that decision, I think I don't think I would have because I had a good, I had a good thing going on where I was at the time. But I did, and something was there, and something drove me to do it, and that's where I am now. So anyone that's seen trade price cars, it's uh, it's got a small frontage of about twenty five cars. Um, it's a uh, it's on an industrial estate, um, but now we hold um, some two hundred and fifty cars. Um, but, but it doesn't look any different from the front than it did sort of eight nine years ago. But we're fortunate; we've got a lot of space out the back um, and yeah we've just grown and you know my mentality of just reinvesting back into stock um, is, is, is where we are today so yeah summary on trade price cars that's sort of where it is and like you rightly said we, we've, we've gone on um, you know over the years and won some of your your great awards which you know we're very grateful for and you know very grateful to the the customers that we have um, and uh you know, the, the 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 reviews and everything we've done, but we make no bones about it. Whilst I head it up, you know, it's all down to the staff. The staff are absolutely fantastic. We've got some great people who have been there for a number of years. Um, you know, we don't have a massive staff turnover, which is something I'm very proud of. Um, and, you know, for me, consistency is key. And, and I think that's how we managed to, you know, consistently deliver and that's what's probably more important now coming out the other side of something like this pandemic is that you know the businesses that are doing things right and um, looking after their customers and you know and, and being transparent with everything that they do they're the ones that are going to come out the other side of this uh, this this pandemic and, and and really push on well i suppose a lot of people have got uh a lot to be grateful for the fact you're not teetotal then, aren't they? So. <laughs> <laughs> I am now, teetotal yeah. now. So yeah, it wasn't back then, but I don't, I don't drink now. So, but yeah, it's, uh, do you know what like I say? I, maybe I would have, maybe I made that decision, but it was a very, it had to be an impulse decision. I drove past it, the, the site every day. And um, there, I, as I drove past that, uh, drove past that morning the guy the, the the previous dealer was pulling off so and that's when I just walked straight on and said right what's going on with this site is it available is it not I said don't speak to me I'm coming off here's the landlord's number I rung the landlord and within half an hour I said yes I have it it's just something pushed me to do it and would I have would I have would I have not have at that time you know could have, would have gone on in time and I would have done something goes without saying but I still actually think yeah, I think I probably would have waited a couple of years longer than I did um, had that situation arose. But, you know, one thing I'd say to anyone, you know, if you're looking at doing it, um, just go with it, you know, and, and probably more so now than, than ever. Because, you know, if you're going to make that break, do it now. You know, now's the time to be doing it. You know, a lot of people have been made, you know, you know, redundant or, you know, they're in jobs which are, are, are unsecure and all the rest of it. You know, if you've got a desire to go and, you know, give it a go for yourself, now's the time to do it because, you know, it is busy out there. There's plenty of customers, you know. Um, you know, I never get threatened by the fact that other car dealers setting up. You know, I'm great and that's part of the reason why, you know, Octane Finance was born because we want to, we want to be able to help other dealers facilitate finance and we want to help, you know, join, you know, partner with them to, you know, for want of a better word, so that we can we can really help them prosper in the same way that you know trade price cars has. You know, we've we've not reinvented the wheel with anything we've done in trade price cars. You know, it's 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 been really simple ingredient, you know, get good people, be enthusiastic about the job look after customers, you know, do the job right, do what you say you were going to do, which is something that got instilled into me at BMW, you know, that 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 do what you say you're going to do is is printed on the walls of a lot of BMW dealers and it was mine, you know, and it's simple, do, do the basics right, do the basics right and, you know, you, 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 you can prosper. Now, a lot of people would be content with your story so far because it's a great story, very ambitious. But you also own a bridge touring car team, so so tell me about that because that's pretty unusual. 
Yeah, it's. Um, I never anticipated I'd be sitting here with this now, but my uh, my desire for motorsport, um, it's always been there. It's definitely always been there. I never would have, had, if, you know, envisioned it's, it's got to where it has now. But I'll come on to another story maybe in a minute. But there was there was a premonition, funny enough, about four or five years ago that. I was going to own the race team and here we are, we're sitting here now. But to cut a long story short, you know, I'd always wanted to get involved in motorsport and um, never done it as a kid. You know, my, my dad turned around to me and said, no, we're never doing it. It's too expensive. Um, we had some friends who was heavily involved in motorsport and knew the cost of it. But as a family, we was heavily into our sailing. So, you know, that was where what we did at weekends, which was fine. But when Trade Price Cars was formed um, and, you know, we started doing all right, I always wanted to race, you know, I wanted to get involved in racing um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I sort of went and done it. So I, I started in a club level championship um, called the BMW Compact Cup, which is the old E36 yeah. BMW Compact. It's a very good championship. Uh, it was great then and it's great now. We're still going to this day with very strong grids. Um, and it, it was a great championship, you know, I got involved with that and uh, I raced in that for a couple of seasons. Um, and yeah, just gradually sort of started getting involved in, in other championships, moving up the ladder. Um, and then I, I, I started getting involved um, within circles within the British Touring Car Championship. So for anyone that does or doesn't know that, you know, that's the UK's premier uh, motorsport series is live on ITV. ITV4, you know, foot forward circuits of, you know, 40, 50,000 people. It's very, very well followed. So I started racing in one of the support championships um, in that, uh, the Janetta Super Cup. Um, I did a season in that and I've done a couple of rounds in the Porsche Carrera Cup as well, which is one of the support championships. Um, so, yeah, been around that for a couple of years. And then I actually got involved in some sponsorship with uh, one of the teams in the British Touring Car Championship. So... Um, I've always been one, I've always taken great pride in having, you know, the company name on something, you know, so whether that's um, a mug, a personalised mug, it comes to trade price cars, it's got trade price cars on it. Um, you know, we're, 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 I've done stuff with South End United, we're still um, the South End United club sponsor, I have done for a number of years, so trade price cars is on the shirt backs. Um, and I took great pride in seeing it on a British touring car. Um, so I got involved and became a title sponsor for, for a team in the, in the series. And then that basically just developed into to where we are now. And um, the reason I actually got involved in buying the team was, um, you know, I, wanted to, I felt that there was a good opportunity with it. I wanted to be a bit more in control of the situation, if you like. Um, you know, I knew I could build a good team because we've done it with what we've done, you know, in the business. And yeah, actually, I thought we, we can we can bleed this over into 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 the touring car team as well. And that's what we've done. And we went on last year and, you know, we had our own team. We race as trade price cars racing, um, which is great. You know, we went on and won. Um, Jake Hill uh, won at Knock Hill in Scotland which is fantastic. We had another podium. We arguably should have had a couple of others, um, which wasn't to be, but it was a massively successful season. You know, we brought a lot to the championship in terms of exposure. You know, we, you know, we, we, we worked on our social media heavily on the touring car team, um, you know, and, 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 and have really upped what people were doing within the championship now. I'm proud of that, you know, because I think we set a bit of a benchmark last year. Um, and one thing I knew that we could do, and I said to the guys, you know, uh, when we originally said, look, are we going to let's go and do this, is that one thing we can do is make a real big impact on the social media side of things to get things going. You know, we might not go and win races in our first season, which we ended up doing, but we can be the leaders, you know, we can be the leaders in in our marketing approach and engagement with the fans and all of that. And, and that's absolutely what, you know, what we've done. And it's been massively successful. Unfortunately, this year, um, obviously due to the pandemic and COVID, it's taken a back seat at the minute, but it's due to get going on the 1st of August at Donington Park. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's been great. But, you know, for us, it's a marketing model, if I'm honest. That's, you know, I've got passion for it and I love it and I love being involved with it. Um, but it's a marketing model and, you know, ultimately it gets us in front of, 
you know, millions of people, um, you know, throughout the year on TV. Um, you know, so we can't underestimate, you know, what that does to the business for the profile and, you know, and, and, and all the rest of it. So, yeah, a bit of both is, is a lot of uh, love the sport, um, you know, but, you know, for us, it was, it was it's a marketing tool as well, which, you know, we've managed to, to use, you know, like to think successfully. Now, quite a few manufacturers over the years, they've, they've pulled out of British touring cars because they, they, they don't feel as though by winning on Sunday doesn't translate to sales on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. But for yeah. businesses such as yourself, you obviously have a different view of that, that, that having, having your name over the side of an Audi um, promotes your business well. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely, because, you know, I think, you know, like you said, the, the, old, the old way of it being, you know, wins on a Sunday, you know, cars get sold on a Monday in the showroom mentality, you know, probably maybe that had dropped away a little bit. I still think there's an element, you know, so you've got, you know, BMW, Honda, you know, those guys, the manufacturers still, you know, heavy above it and ultimately they want to win. So it's very, it's difficult for an independent like us with our, you know, limited resources in compared to what, you know, they're, they're pumping into it and backed by the manufacturer. But that's why, you know, the social side of it's such a big thing for us because we can, we can, you yeah, know, we can be up here. You know, we, we're going to struggle against BMW as a manufacturer, but, you know, put our media up against them, then you could argue that, you know, ours is, ours, ours is stronger there. But, yeah, I, I see a lot of value in doing it. You know, it's, you know, for us, is the name on the one car is one thing. Um, and yet, you know, we look at our website visitors, you know, certainly after we have a good result like Jake Hill did at Knock Hill, you know, uh, if anyone follows me on LinkedIn, you know, I put some stuff on there at the time, you know, the web stat spike on Google on the Sunday when he's winning, so like the half hour spike, you know, one o'clock, 1.30, whenever it might be, you know, when they, they you know, the, the camera's very much on him um, and the car, um, you know, the web stats go through the roof, but it's more sponsorship and marketing is much more as, you know, most of us know, it's much more than just having your name on a football shirt or on a, um, on a, on a race car, you know, it's, it's, it's about building trust and we're in the world, a world of, you know, of trust and reviews and brand and all of that sort of stuff. And the way I see it is, is when someone logs onto our website and they see that we, we, we race in the British Touring Car Championship, and we're a sponsor of Southend United, and we've won Car Dealer Magazine Awards, and we've got all these reviews online. You know, when they log on to our website, if we've got a car for, you know, if we've got a full Fiesta at £6,000, and, you know, Joe Bloggs Car Sales has got one at £6,000, who are they going to come to? You know, they're coming to us, you know, because, you know, we've got that trust. We're on the TV, we've got this. And there's no disrespect to the other dealer, um, but I think reality is, is I know where I would go and where I'd spend my money because they know we're not going anywhere. We're not, we're not just there to have a quick buck and earn, you know, whatever margin out of them on that fiesta. We, 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 we're, we're more than that. We've got this whole social culture going on within the business that, you know, people like. And, you know, with the touring cars and with the football, you know, we take customers. So, um on a race weekend, we have um, we've got really nice top of the range hospitality um, set up, which you know houses between eighty and hundred people on a race on a race day. Um, you know we take customers to that. You know, so if people buy a car from us and they want to come and experience that, then they get access to all areas. They're in the pits. They can come in the garages, brick brick walk, all of that sort of stuff. You know, we've got a box down at South End United. We give free tickets for that. Um, you know, so all of that stuff, it just makes us, it, it, put, it we like to think, you know, it puts us above the others in our whole offering is. And, you know, we all know now that, you know, gone are the days of buying a car out of the auction, sticking it through the hand car wash and, and putting it on auto trader and earning, earning a margin on it. Those days are gone, you know, and if, you know, it's all about building the brand now and you know we're in it for, for the long haul you know we're, 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 we're a successful company in our own right at the minute you know but where we want to go and the things that we want to do and continue to do and you know it's, it's all part of our uh, you know the, the, the bigger picture for us James. 
and, and of course, last year having uh, the likes of Mark Blundell in the team as well, you know, a, you know, a Le Mans winner, former F1 driver. Again, just it just dovetails with what you've been saying. It's it's about it's about promoting the brand and saying, look, you know, we're trustworthy and uh, it's a good marketing tool. Yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic to have Mark, you know, um, in the team was just unbelievable. We was a new team in the British Touring Car Championship and he was a new driver to the British Touring Car Championship. Obviously, wildly successful in everything that he's done, like say, won Le Mans and, you know, I, I, I grew up watching him uh, in, in Formula One, you know, I just, it's, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and it was, it, when the opportunity come up, for him to join the team, it was a no-brainer. You know, we had to jump for a few hoops <clears throat> to get it done. Um, he bought, um, along with a huge uh, blue chip sponsor in Hewlett Packard. Um, so, you know, that comes with making sure that we, we we can make the brand work alongside trade price cars. You know, and that was a proud moment. You know, we've got Hewlett Packard, which was the biggest sponsor on that grid full stop. Um, on a trade price cars car so we've got tradepricecars.com and then we've got Hewlett Packard right next to it you know it's a bit surreal um but you know it just it just shows you you know like, like I say what we're about we take what we are seriously you know what we do seriously um and he was a great ambassador for the team you know and he's gone on now to to do his own thing he's got his own team um you know so he's taken a back step from racing himself and you know he's got all the ingredients to go and do something wildly successful which they will be you know they've got a they've got a great platform they've got a great team behind them um they've got a great business model with everything they do um but they actually you know share similar values to to what we do as, as trade price cars you know they they surround themselves with good people um you know deliver on, on what they say they're going to do. And like I say, certainly from a touring car perspective, they go on and have a, a fantastic year. And, and likewise, hopefully we'll, we will do as well. We've got two hot prospects this year in uh, Bobby Thompson, um, who's, who, who's, who, who we really tip to, you know, go on to, to, to big things, you know, this season and the future. Um, and James Gornall, who's a rookie who I've raced with in BMW Compact Cup, and you know pretty much anything he touches, he wins. You know, so got two great guys. We're just itching to get going with the season now. Brilliant! It's 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 a it's a wonderful story. It really is. Now, um, just just turning back to the business, just quickly, um, what do you think the challenges are going to be for the rest of the year? Um, I think you know we we got mate. We'd be on. I think we've got to be honest with ourselves, and you know. It's it's set that you know probably the economic or certainly the economic pinch if you like um, hasn't hit us yet you know so we're all enjoying you know the the the, the government grants the furlough the helping the easing us back in and all of that sort of stuff but you know I think we've got to accept the fact that you know things might get tougher um, let's hope they don't you know I've got um, um, as you you know hopefully you you you, you felt from this. This, this interview that, you know, I'm really buoyant, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged and I feel that, you know, the market is going to be buoyant um, going forward, you know, because the demand's there. People want to buy cars. It doesn't matter, you know, what's going on in the world. Not, you know, I'm not saying it's, going to, it's not going to affect, you know, new car sales quite possibly, you know, obviously the demand is going to be there. The, the, the product's not going to be there because of, you know, lockdown and all the rest of it. But, Certainly from, you know, the independent world, the used car market, I think it, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be strong. We're all doing it already, I know we are, you know, but, you know, if I was to the same thing, you know, in my business, I'm looking at what, you know, looking at what's necessary, ne you know, is there stuff that we can cut out, you know, it, it, could we be doing things a bit different, you know, you know, again, like we said pre pre going live, you know, we've cut our marketing spend probably by a third. Have we actually spent and have we actually seen the difference? No, we haven't, probably not. So, you know, there's there's some stuff where we've been able to manage there. You know, can we get staff doing a little bit more than what they are doing? Um, you know, it's it's looking at all of those costings and you know, 
I don't need to sit here and say, I know the business owners out there, are, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the directors of businesses are doing it because they, they've had to. And they've had an opportunity to do it. You know, we've had two months of lockdown, you know, and, and everyone's had an opportunity just to take a bit of a breather and go, do you know what, you know, um, look at it and identify the areas um, which which are necessary and, um, 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 and what isn't. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's said a lot. And that's one thing for the motor trading fairness, you know, it's, you know, the messages on these forums and, you know, some of the Facebook groups, you know, it's all been very encouraging stuff, really. You know, people saying that stick together, you know, don't go slashing car prices, you know, you know, it's, everything's going to be okay, you know, and, and at the end of the day, uh, early indication is everything is going to be okay, you know. But you know, let's keep keep it simple, keep positive at the end of the day. Which you know, if if you keep positive, you you know, positive outcomes happen. If if you if you wallow in you know negativity and this is going to happen and blah 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 and blah 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 blah, which you know we can all be guilty of doing that sometimes. But you know, it's just yeah, it's just you know, get on, do the basics right. And I think that's what it is, you know. And if it does mean you know, going back to basics a little bit and, and not overcomplicate it, then 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 do it. You know, that's what we've done in all honesty. We have probably simplified things a little bit and you know it's it's, it's working. Just had a couple of questions have come in um from people who are watching the broadcast live on YouTube. Um our good friend Umesh Samani says um what's the biggest changes that you've made presumably with, with coronavirus? So how what are the things that you've changed and what is the, the opportunity coronavirus has, has, has given you, really? Yeah. Hi, Umesh. Um, good to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, we... Do you know what? I wouldn't say we've changed loads. Um, you know, and, and, and I, please don't think this sounds arrogant in any way. I don't think... we. I think we were doing as good a job as we probably could have been pre-lockdown you know we like we we make sure that our digital market space is is bang on um you know we make sure things like our imagery is right our descriptions are right you hear it so many times but it really is the basics you know basics, yeah. um and you know making sure that you know we're very attentive in dealing with the inquiries and you know all that sort of stuff so i wouldn't say we've changed a huge amount i think we've we've probably we've probably made sure that we're still doing it and, and in fairness actually the sound imagery sort of stuff we have actually changed things a little bit what we're doing we've probably been you know been a bit more conscious of you know for us one of the things we, we probably did identify a silly thing but make the vanity standards you know we felt actually the vanity is very good but it could be a bit better you know so i was actually sitting there looking at pictures of the cars and i think why is this car over age but then i'm looking at the picture of the uh, the window switch, for argument's sake, zoomed in, and then you can see all bits of dust and a bit of muck in there. And I'm sitting there, when I've got a bit more time to sit there and look at it, I'm going, would I buy that car? Is that enough to put me off as a consumer? It probably is. And it definitely is when all of this coronavirus is going on and we're really conscious of cleanliness and germs and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we've been more focused on that. Obviously, it goes without saying we've we, we've all uh, had to ensure that we, we, we're complying and doing our best, and seem to be doing our best as dealers. So, at trade price cars, we've got you know um, you know sneeze screens everywhere. Um, we've got a one-way system in the offices, so staff and uh, customers don't walk against each other. So they walk in one door, walk out another. Um, we've got the, 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 the stand, you know, two metre signs everywhere. We've got hand sanitizer stations. Uh, we've got everything that we can do, we can do it. We're respectful with the customers, you know, so we're saying, to, would you like us to, you know, would you like to look at that on your own? You know, we've never been a high, we've never been a high pressure company anyway. We've always, you know, come, you know, our service and our cars sell themselves, but we're always just over conscious of making sure that if a customer doesn't want us to, be closer to them, you know, just standard, you know, being polite and, you know, ensuring that, you know, we're not putting the customer in a position where they 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 feel uncomfortable. But yeah, to to summarise that, I don't think we've done loads different. I think we've probably just we've dived into each individual thing probably a little bit deeper, just to ensure that what we know we're doing, that actually can we do what we feel is good 
but can we do it that little bit better? And yeah, the, the, the photos thing is, is, is an example of that. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, just one last question from Andy, UK911. Um, what's your um, view over the potential move to EVs and used value? So a bit of a two-part question there. So what's, you, what's your view of uh, the potential move to EV cars and used values? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I'll be honest, the EV stuff, um, I don't, I don't probably look too much into it. You know, it's we we don't deal with any of it at the minute. You know, of course, at some point we're going to have to. Um, we probably not just through probably a little bit of naivety to the to to the product and everything about it. Um, I don't think it's my personal opinion is it's not going to change anything overnight. Um, obviously, it's the future, but you know, it's there isn't enough. Excuse me. It's not enough demonstration that you know the the product's going to necessarily be able to replace what we know as you know petrol diesel at the minute. You know, I was talking to 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 one of our guys the other day. You know, and he's sort of you know his ex Land Rover and you know the Land Rover Range Rover Sport. I'm sure he said to me like the the electric you know uh, range on that's like 35 to 45 miles or something like that and it's just like you think well we're miles off of we're miles off of being able to you know for evs to completely dominate the marketplace but when it does then great you know that's that's it's what's right for 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 the world and and all the rest of it and we'll embrace it when that does happen but i think we're uh you know, we're a little way away from that at the minute. Um, on the used prices thing, you know, I've got to be honest, you know, pre at the start of lockdown, uh, lockdown, I was concerned. You know, I really was. You know, we hold a lot of stock and I'm sitting there, I'm running the numbers in my head and I'm thinking, God, if, if either the stock value goes down by 15, 20%, it's going to cost me X much overnight and blah, 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 and you know, all that sort of stuff run through my head. But you know, and we did trade out some bits, you know, just to reduce the reduce the liability uh, and the exposure to what we did have in stock um, at the time. But yeah, I don't think it's uh, what we can see at the minute. I think I've even heard some, you know, some of the cap stuff's been going, you know, cap values stuff's been going up a little bit. And anything that I know of, and we have been buying stuff out of BCA and, and Mannheim, um, and you know, in other areas, and you know, we're having to pay sensible money for it. We're not. We're not nicking stuff for thousands of pounds behind book. You know, we might get one, one out of ten. We we have a bit of a result on, but you know, most of the stuff's making sensible money. And you know, given that, I think you know, demand's going to outstrip you know what's out there supply-wise at the minute. I don't think anyone needs to be worrying. And and one thing you know, like I said earlier on in the conversation, I would, you know, we're not. I would definitely, definitely, definitely would not be slashing prices. There's absolutely no need to do it. You know, we've had a busy week. We started off this week with a very busy week. We've actually upped the prices of a few bits um, where the market has moved a little bit. Um, you know, and we, we, we mark, we're, we're pricing stuff according to the market and where we have been pre-lockdown. So, yeah, I think, you know, all things, go, all things considered, you know, hold your own, hold your nerve. You know, the... the there's stuff happening out there and you know it doesn't just need to come from me you know all dealers are busy every every dealer that i speak to are busy you know like i said we've got octane finance as well we've got you know 250 supporting dealers you know they're all very busy and actually believe it or not i think we could we could get close this 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 month if it carries on the way it is you know close to having you know a record a record month in that area so if you know if octane finance supporting dealers is is busy that means that all the dealers out there are selling cars which you know is which is great news for all of us brilliant okay so finally dan um what piece of advice would you give uh would you uh, give to yourself if you went back in time and uh when you launched your business um probably much of the stuff i've probably already we you know covered to a degree you know i suppose um you know fundamentally you've got to believe in yourself you know at the end of the day if you if you believe you can achieve it you will you know um, if anyone's read the secret it's a great book he's sitting on the shelf behind me i don't know if anyone has but if anyone reads that it's a great inspiration if you haven't read it already um you know it's available on amazon um, hopefully they put me on a commission for uh, plugging it. 
Yeah, no, it really is, and it is a great book. And he, but quite simply, if you don't believe you can do it, you won't do it. You know, if you think you achieve it, you will. Um, so yeah, you've got to believe in yourself. Um, you know, now's the time to be doing it. I, I personally feel if, if if you've been sitting on the fence for a little while, just go and give it a go. Now you're never going to get a better opportunity than now. Um, you know, and 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 the basics of business for me is 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 is, is be honest. Don't cut corners. Do the job right. Your reputation is much more important than anything. Any car that you ever sell, you know, your reputation is absolutely anything. You know, we we should know that, but some people maybe don't realise the importance of it. But we was an early adopter of, of making sure that our reviews online were good and were positive, and we. You know, we have reaped the rewards, and I really do mean that. We have reaped the rewards of our reviews being good online because nearly everyone that walks through the door goes, well, your, your reviews are amazing. You know, and we've gotten across multiple platforms. I own Trustpilot, Google, Car Dealer Reviews, which was an old, uh, uh, a previous platform, Carbine Advisor, if anyone remembers that. You look at any of them, you know, they're everywhere. Um, you, know, so, you know, stay honest, do the job properly, don't cut corners. You know, it, it sounds basic, but, you know, for us, you know, if a car goes wrong, you know, and sometimes even when we're even in the right and the customer's in the wrong and you think sometimes out of pride, you're like, I ain't going to do that. You know, I ain't going to do that. You know, whatever, you know, nine times out of 10, we get the little bit of work done or we do a little bit of goodwill or we say to the customer, look, how about we split this 50-50? Do you know what I mean? Because... <laughs> At the end of the day, they're only human beings and they know nine times out of ten if they've been unreasonable. You know, and if you come to them with a bit of a solution, they will remember that and they will come back and they will buy again. So it might cost you a bit of money now, but trust me, it comes back. You know, it comes back in waves and then they recommend their mum and they go, do you know what? Trade price cars, I was a bit of an arsehole, or whatever, I'm speaking my name, you know, the time. And that, you know, I was, um, they was under a bit of pressure, but you know what? I really kicked up a bit of a sting. I was quite rude to them, but they actually got, you know, they did do it. They come to a compromise. That customer, nine times out of 10, comes back. And, you know, like I say, the family members do, and then their recommendations do. Um, and one thing that we make sure on the, you know, going back to the review side of things is, is if someone's had a negative experience and, um, you know, make sure you get them to do a review, you know, because we, we, you know, we, the best reviews online are the ones where the customer's gone, I had a problem with it, gearbox went on the car after a month, blah, 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 blah. But actually, do you know what? I got put through to um, a service representative who was really attentive and they couldn't have done any more. And all right. It took two weeks to get it done, but they got it sorted. They didn't quibble about getting it done. They're the reviews that you want because, the re and I'm the same, and I think we're all guilty of it. We don't look at the five-star ones. We look at the worst ones, or we're trying to look for reason not to trust that company. So if you've got some reviews in there whereby, you know, and it cars go wrong, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and people make mistakes, um, you know, we, we, we get it wrong, you know, sometimes. But if you can demonstrate to your potential customer that when something does go wrong, that you put it right, um, you know, that is that is more important um, than anything as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I do say this to quite a lot of people, you know, a customer can buy a car off of another dealer or can buy, you know, say to my sales guys to say to their customers, you know, you could go and buy a car from another dealer, never have a problem with it. And you think that dealer's fantastic. But nothing's ever gone wrong in that car. Had it gone wrong in that car, you might not have got, you probably wouldn't have got the same service that you've got with us. We've had a problem with our car, but we've dealt with it in the right manner, you know, and actually that's where you need to build that, you know, build that trust and be, you know, enthusiastic about how you're going to deal with the after sale with the problem because inevitably cars go wrong. And, you know, that's our, you know, our key pitch to our customers when they're sitting in front of our guys is, look, you know, rest assured, if you buy a car from trade price cars, if and when it goes wrong, because chances are at some point it's going to, you know, if it goes wrong, we're going to look after you. We're going to deal with it in a timely manner. 
you know, you're not going to have any quibbles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that, that, that goes a long way. So, yeah, so I probably rab rabbited on a little bit of that question, James. But, you know, believe in yourself, do the job right, don't cut corners, um, you know, and just... And, and, and just rock with it. See where, see you know, see where you can get with, and make sure your your reputation. You stand, you know, you do what you say you're going to do, and 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 you're you're proud of the reputation and, and the time, effort, and energy that you put into it in the first instance. You know, let's, let's make no bones about it. It's hard work. Um, you know, having a business, it is. You know, and it isn't for everyone. You know, you've got to really want it. If you really want it and you go for it and put all your time and energy into it you'll your succeed, you know, there's no doubt about it. You know, if you don't, you might not. I'm not saying you won't have some success, but, you know, it goes without saying the people out there are really, really doing well um, are the ones who are, are sort of living it, you know, and it, it's ingrained in them. So, yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit of a, a, bit of a summary on that one, James. And thanks <laughs> for the question in the first place. <laughs> no, that was great. Great, great words of advice. Great way to end as well. Thanks very much, Dan. That was a fantastic chat. Really enjoyed that. Um, tomorrow we'll be speaking with Robin Luscom from Luscom Suzuki. On Wednesday is the turn of Amari Supercars' is Sheikh Amari. And then on Thursday we have Anton Khan and John Marshall from SW Car Supermarket. Now, if you want to get involved with Car Dealer Lives like this one, you can email me james.bachelor at blackballmedia.co.uk or James Baggett. You can reach him at james at blackballmedia.co.uk. Follow me on Twitter at JRR Bachelor or James Baggett at Car Dealer Ed. And we're both on LinkedIn and you can message us there as well. Also, if you want to have breaking news sent directly to your phone, we've set up Car Dealer Magazine WhatsApp groups where we share the most important stories. Get in touch with us if you want the link to one of those. And on our website, you'll find a schedule for all of our upcoming Car Dealer Lives in the live section. Now that just leads me to say thank you very much to Dan again and uh, we'll join you again tomorrow. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.